Ladies and gentlemen, this is a response to an inconvenient fact. January 2000, 2010 by loser McCain is through. The modus operandi of McCain is through is fairly clear, and rather than go over all the information again, we'll summarize some of it and provide viewers with some new info. McCain is through is basically rehashing the same garbage she's belched out several times before, although this time she does spend a lot of time whining about religion on a global warming video. We won't bother with that except by pointing out that this atheist has had some major trouble with the words with words such as indisputable, immeasurable, and defamation. McCain is through, aims to put up as many cookie cutter global warming videos as possible to make people think she's responding to criticism or providing new evidence. Instead, it's the same old, same old. She goes over high temperatures in Boston at an airport nonetheless. Mobile, Alabama, Anchorage, Alaska, and Seattle, but we'll point out again as we have several times before, she hasn't said a word about Anthony Watts' work surveying Global, Historic, Global Historical Climatology Network surface air weather stations and finding the vast majority of them not in compliance with the National Weather Service standards. Check our playlists. We've made this point to her several times and she's ignoring it. She does parrot an interesting point at the 408 mark, quoting Gerald Meal, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, as saying if temperatures were not warming, the number of record daily highs and lows being set each year would be approximately even. This is not true, and I even pointed this out in one of my global warming videos, which was not a response to Mick Stupid. In a 2001 issue of Theoretical and Applied Climatology, the author analyzed the day-to-day -day variability of two temperature series documented in Switzerland from 1901 to 1999. These two sites had experienced a 1.5 and 1.2 degree centigrade increase in temperature, respectively. What occurred was a reduction in day-to-day -day temperature variability at both sites. The reduction in temperature variability was linked to a decrease in the number of cold days and nights. The author concluded, warmer temperatures are accompanied by a general reduction of variability both in daily temperature range and in the monthly day-to-day -day variability. Cooling, not warming, brings on the drastic increases in temperature variability. Contrary to the anthropogenic global warming model, it's not necessarily true that we should have an equal number of highs and lows. McCain is through links to a Reuters article that tells us 2009 might be the one of the warmest years ever, but again she's relying on data from sources that like to throw away raw data and uses 1961 to 1990 as a base period, excluding the very hot 30s. NASA has already retracted, again I went over this before, its previous statement that 1998 was the hottest year on record, it's 1934. McCain is through is using 30 years of data to prove that temperatures are hotter than ever on Earth, on an Earth that is, according to her, over 4 billion years old. This is akin to exit polling two people in a presidential election and using that as a basis on who will win. Ridiculous, but anyone with an IQ above 50 can figure it out. We should also bring up again the fact that McCain is through is ignoring a lot of evidence we've given her pertaining to climate change before the Industrial Revolution. She has failed to answer our evidence concerning climate change before the Industrial Revolution in China, Canada, Greenland, Mexico, East Antarctica, and the fact that CO2 levels were more than four times higher than today. Again, check our response playlist. All the information and references are in there. McCain is through is still beating the Australia's hottest summer ever drum, but she's failed to inform her viewers that it only gets hot after the data is adjusted. Willis Eschenbach noticed something funny about the raw data coming out of Darwin, Australia. Again, we'll have all the relevant links on the right side. There are three main global temperature data sets. One is at the Climate Research Unit. One is at the Global Historical Climate climate network and one is at NASA's Goddard Institute of Space Studies. The three groups take the raw data and they homogenize it to remove things like when a station was moved to a warmer location and there's a two degree centigrade jump in the temperature. The three global temperature records are usually called CRU, GISS, and GHCN. Both GISS and CRU, however, get almost all their raw data from GHCN. All three produce very similar historical temperature records from the raw data. Before getting homogenized, temperatures in Darwin were falling at 0.7 degrees Celsius per century, but after homogenization, 
they were warming at 1.2 degrees Celsius per century, and the adjustment that they made was over 2 degrees per century. When those guys adjust, they don't mess around, and the adjustment is an odd shape with the adjustment first going stepwise, then climbing roughly to stop at 2.4 degrees centigrade. I'm not suggesting some grand conspiracy theory, but as I point out in another one of my responses to McStupid, the Climate Research Unit destroyed a lot of raw data. Now, why would they do that? In addition, it was recently learned that an IPCC report trumpeting an end to all Himalayan glaciers by 2035 was a complete fabrication. The scientists who said that the Himalayan glaciers will be gone by 2035 have admitted the claim has as much credibility as sightings of the mythical Yeti. It's their fraudulent claims that are melting away. The IPCC claim has been traced to an article published in 1999 in an Indian magazine by Syed Hosnain, a little-known scientist and based at the, and I'm not going to bother pronouncing this university, in Delhi, India. Journalist Fred Pierce heard of the article and interviewed Hassan for a piece in the popular journal New Scientist. Pierce is quoted in the London Times as saying, Hosnain told me then that he was bringing a report containing these numbers to Britain. The report has not been peer-reviewed or formally published in a scientific journal and has no formal status no formal status, so I reported his work on that basis. Later, Pierce obtained a copy of Hosnain's original article and discovered it did not mention 2035 as a date the Himalayan glaciers would disappear, as he told Pierce on the phone. One email written by a scientist referred to ways of ensuring information that doubted the veracity of man-made climate change did not appear in IPCC reports. Several emails also revealed that some scientists at East Anglia tried to bully colleagues who challenged the theory of man-made climate change. Murari Lal, who oversaw the chapter on Himalayan glaciers in the 2007 IPCC report, said on the weekend he was considering recommending that the claim about glaciers be dropped. Speaking of glaciers, and this is some newer material, Argentina's Perito Moreno Glacier is one of the only few ice fields worldwide that have withstood rising global temperatures. Nourished by Andean snowmelt, the glacier constantly grows even as it spawns icebergs the size of apartment buildings into a frigid lake, maintaining a nearly perfect equilibrium since measurements began more than a century ago. We're not sure why this happens, said Andres Rivera, a glaciologist with the Center for Scientific Studies and Valdivia, Chile, but not all glaciers respond equally to climate change. This glacier is growing and thriving despite higher temperatures. I must also thank my, thank my friend Big B5949 for some links on the previous material I went over. And for our finale, we have these two tidbits for folks to meditate on. There's an increased, there's increased evidence that the Arctic could face seasonally ice-free conditions as, and much warmer temperatures in the future. Scientists documented evidence that the Arctic Ocean and Nordic seas were too warm to support summer sea ice during the mid-Pleocene warm period 3.3 to 3 million years ago. This period is characterized by warm temperatures similar to those projected for the end of this century and is used as an analog to understand future conditions. The U.S. Geological Survey found that summer sea surface temperatures in the Arctic were between 50 and 64 degrees Fahrenheit during the mid-Pleocene, while current temperatures are around or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. An Arctic, an ice-free summer in the Arctic three million years ago. We're all going to die. And lastly, according to U.S. National Snow and Ice Data, the U.S. National Snow and Ice Data Center in Colorado, Arctic summer ice, sea ice has increased by 409,000 square miles, or 26%, since 2007. So again, we have numerous examples of massive climate change occurring before the Industrial Revolution, which McCain is through, continues to ignore and will ignore forever. We've got the Climate Research Unit and the IPCC report in 2007 riddled with errors, uh, bogus material, non-peer-reviewed material. So uh, McCain is through. Uh, good luck in your next global warming video. We look forward to responding to that as well. Good luck. You will need it. And for correcting your misconceptions, don't thank me now.